as the crowd filters in to the Judy Dow Standish Gymnasium on the campus of Ledger High School. They're expecting an early season test about who is for real in the ECC. Is it the visiting 5-0 Fitch Falcons or the home Ledger Colonels? And we find out on game day. Live on theday.com, Casey O'Neill along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. And if we saw NFA kind of take apart Waterford and establish themselves as the team, these two teams tonight are trying to vie for the other team. Who's next? Who's next in line? And uh, this has been a four-year building process. The Falcons keep facing. Go off to a real good start. They've got a great senior leader in Ajaya Brown. And as far as Dave Cornish goes, they've been kind of that next level benchmark of the ECC the last, say, seven, eight, nine years. He's having to figure things out on the fly and kind of coach them up this year. Yeah, Ledger's been sort of a decade of, of, of excellence. They've been very good. Uh, not always the best team in the conference, but one of the best teams in the conference what for about 10 years. Yeah. And they have been. And Fitch, of course, has been nowhere to be found. I mean, he, they've been uh, the long and winding road, I said. You know, they've come from the depths. Uh, and now they have that group that has, has done nothing but lose games, and now they've started to make the climb. And so they're very close. And so in order for them uh, to get here, they needed a dynamic player. Ledger is led by a new dynamic player. So let's talk about the players to watch yep. in tonight's game. Top against a tough, tough Fitch Falcon team. And for Fitch, how about Ajaya Brown? Senior guard is a tremendous leader on and off the court for this Falcon team. He's got a quick first step. AJ can get to the rim and deliver the goods. A solid rebounder and defender. Mick Brown, a complete high school basketball player. Hey, Ajaya, he's going to the Coast Guard Academy next year. Yeah, someday he's going to be a state senator. You know, Jaden Bickham has become a kind of a quiet presence on the Ledger team for three years. Now it's his senior season. He's grown into the role of a leader who wants the ball in his hand. And he wants the defensive assignment of the other team's star player. Jaden is a very, very uh, competitive kid. You may not really see that. And he seems like he's soft-spoken and stuff. He's quiet. You don't see much. But if he makes a turnover, what his maturity level this year been from the past, he would make a turnover, put his head down, jog back. We would get on him about that. This year, if he made a turnover, he's getting down real low. Like he's saying to himself, I'm getting this ball back for the, for this team. It's been a long road, a lot of hard work. Um, my freshman year, I didn't play at all at the varsity level. Sophomore year, came in, get a, gave a little bit of effort. But then next year, got the starting role, but didn't perform that well. So I'm trying to do better this year. I'm trying to lower my turnovers, my passing. Last year I was making a lot of just like really bad um, passes and they're just trying to fit it into the tight coverage and making that fancy play. But this year I'm just trying to just like make the, the play that's going to help the team and not help myself. We put a lot of pressure on him because he's a smart kid. He knows the offenses. He knows who needs the ball and when. And he, you know, he, he wants to get the ball to the right people. And so we kind of forced him into being a point guard, but he's just a basketball player, but he loves to play defense because he loves to compete. He wants to be on the other team's, opposing team's best player. He wants that assignment every night. It's tough being a point guard, I told him, and playing the opposing team's best player because it kind of wears you down. It's his nature. He wants to, to, to compete, and that's what we love about Jaden. I try to be a team leader, but I try to just seem like one of the guys too. You know, I'm not. I know I'm a senior, but like, I'm not trying to look down on anybody. I just want to take it one game at a time. Just play hard. Don't leave anything else out there. You know, play smart. Try not to make the game hard. Uh, we gotta to play together as a team. Try not to think of it like as like a big game, just think of it as like just a normal game, like just another day on the, in the office, I guess. You know, from year to year, a coach looks for growth and maturation in a player going from his junior year to his senior year. 
And Jaden Bickham is that guy. And Coach puts a lot on him, I think, Casey, because he knows he can handle it, and he wants to get the best out of his senior leader. And he says he guards the other team's best player. Well, guess what? <laughs> Ajaya Brown is that player. Now, he's endured three seasons at Fitch without very much success. But this year, his positivity, and I really mean that, his positivity is a big reason the Falcons have opened the season with six straight wins. Brown trying to take Sutman one-on-one. -on -one. Drive to the basket, left-hand finish. Boy, you like that move, the quick first step, the lefty delivery for the junior. Well, he's firing for move. us. He galvanizes the kids, he organizes them, and he wants to drive them. He's hungry, he was here four years ago, so he knows where we started. They have a plan, they have a vision, and they have a mission, so he knows that there's a lot of work left to do, and as a driven individual, goal-oriented person that he is, he's pushing for that. I've never been like one to, like for meteorocracy, especially the past few seasons. Gets the first one to go, a little front rim and rolls it on. That in. really, really ate at me. You talk about some of the kids you're going to see down the road. He may be one of those kids next year that kind of takes that next step in the league. Nights that we would lose, like I would go home, like I might sleep like two or three hours, but I, it was it would just eat away at me. Even when I was an underclassman or a junior, like I was still I was still always trying to set an example, but now. It's absolutely like paramount that I'm always doing what I'm supposed to do. Because if they see me take a playoff or do something I'm not supposed to do, they're obviously going to go and follow in my footsteps. So just making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And also, I feel I play a big role in that positive, in that positive attitude in the gym. I try to be that guy getting everyone fired up, picking everybody up when we're down, stuff like that. This group in particular really likes each other. There's a lot of common ground, a lot of mutual respect. They like to be with each other. Um, the travel is fun. Um, it's almost like going on field trips with these guys when we're together. It's nice to be in the gym because there's a lot of laughter. Um, even though it's work, there's a lot of play, a lot of fun involved with the work. Everyone's coming in pra into practice positive, ready to work hard, focused, ready to learn plays, stuff like that, um, which hasn't always been there in the past, but let's go! everybody is positive, holding each other accountable. And when you have guys that are making sure everybody else is doing what they're supposed to, it's just a recipe for success. Let's go, family on three. One, two, three. Family. And this is not an overnight success for Ajaya. He has emerged over the last three years as one of the stars, or could be stars this year in the ECC. He's always kept positive, and he's always worked hard on and off the court. He's going to Coast Guard next year, and whatever success this team has this year, they owe a lot to that young man. He's done a great job with his kids around him. Yeah, following in the tradition of some of the great ECC players that have headed on to the Coast Guard Academy, uh, speaks highly of his character. Ajaya Brown is one of them. Well, we're going to watch him, Player of the Year candidate, Jabari Jones over in Ledger on the other side. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. The Day strives to cover stories our readers care about. With a feature called Curious CT, we make it easier for you to tell us what you want to know about the people, places, and issues in Southeastern Connecticut. You submit a question, readers vote, and we investigate and report. Go to theday.com slash CuriousCT for more details. You ask, you vote, we investigate. The following is a presentation of The Day. Patience is a virtue. Good things come to those who wait. Slow and steady wins the race. These were the adages of Fitch High School's boys basketball team on their three-year journey from the depths of the ECC. Now, off to their best start in years, the 5-0 Falcons are looking to continue the journey and cement their status as a team to watch in the ECC. The Falcons have size, quickness, tenacious defense and a charismatic star in Ajaya Brown. Coach Charles Sylvan's resilient group overcame a 12-point deficit to beat New London, continuing to show this group is ready for big things. Now they must overcome one of the best programs in the ECC, Ledger. Despite back-to-back -back losses, Coach Dave Cornish's Colonels also believe they can lay claim to the top spot in the conference. Transfer Jabari Jones has brought size and tenacity to the Colonels, and Jaden Bickham and Xander Hutchins give the Colonels the scoring they need to compete with the elite. Can the Falcons continue the journey? 
Can the Colonels get back on their winning ways? An ECC showdown looms between Fitch and Ledger, and it's live on Game Day on the day.com. Welcome back to Ledger High School. We're moments away from tip-off here in a showdown between the Fitch Falcons and the Ledger Colonels. Sports Doctor, let's talk a little bit about the keys to tonight's game. Sure thing, Casey. Keys to the game tonight. The Sports Doctor's keys to the game for Fitch. How about turn Ledger over? Bring heavy ball pressure and create turnovers. Rebound, important for five guys to be on the glass for this Falcon team on both ends of the floor. And last but not least, knock down shots. Fitch has struggled in the half court set. Important for this Falcon team to knock down open looks. And for Ledger, real simple here, handle the pressure. Ledger needs to find a way to deal with the pressure in the half court and full court set. No turnovers. 14 first quarter of turnovers on Saturday versus Newtown. Ledger can't hurt themselves and turn the ball over. And Casey, how about easy buckets? Either layups or bucket in buckets in transition, the Colonels will have to find a way to create easy scoring opportunities tonight. Listen, they have not scored very well in back-to-back -back games. And funny enough, they've lost back-to-back -back games in Stonington, in Stonington and Newtown. Well, as the players are being introduced, let's meet them and the rest of them for tonight's game. Ajaya Brown, Colchester Elementary. Trey Bryan, Westside Middle. Adriel Todd, Northeast Academy. Colin Anderson, S.B. Butler. Junio Hernandez, Westside Middle School. Javier Roman, Kevin Konoski. Seamus Greaves, S.B. Butler. Jaden Bickham, Gallup Hill School. Omar Whitmore, Gallup Hill Elementary School. Elijah Morin, RMMS. Jabari Jules, with the Elementary. Xander Hutchins, Gales Ferry Elementary. Darrell Cago, Huntington Elementary. Jaden Luther, Brooklyn Elementary. As the starting lineups are being introduced for the Falcons and the Colonels, we are here live on game day at Ledger High School. And Sports Doctor, talk a little bit about what the uh, Falcons have to do. They've been sort of resilient up till now. What do they What do they need to do here early? Hostile gym, this place is always tough to play. Get off to a good start. Uh, get off to a hot start, get an early lead, and play in front. Make Ledger play catch up. Again, Talked about 14 first quarter turnovers on Saturday afternoon in this gym, gym by the Colonels. So Fitch, create a little havoc. You know, get yourself up by six or eight and start to creep a little doubt into the minds of the Colonels. And now on the other side of things, Legend's got the experienced coach. They've got the, you know, the experienced program. Transferred Jabari Jones, played big games at New London last year. So the question is, what do they have to do to get started well, off? they got to take care of the basketball, Casey. They cannot hurt themselves. And the other thing they need to do is come out with a lot of energy. They were flat on Saturday afternoon, which is understandable. One o'clock game on a Saturday, tough to get up for. But no reason to come out flat tonight for Dave Cornish and the Ledger Colonels. Ladies and gentlemen, for our national anthem in tonight's ball game, the Ledger High School Chamber Choir is here and will appear at center court and bring to us our national anthem. So I give to you the Ledger High School Chamber Choir. Brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Voted the number one best dental practice five years in a row in the Days Reader Choice Award. Visit them at 177 Boston Post Road or at Waterford Dental Health. 
Chamberchamber.com. Great job there by nice, huh? the Chamber Choir. Now, yeah. uh, my son AJ is a Chamber Choir at uh, William J. Johnson Middle School, and they're going to be singing the National Anthem at the Black Wolves game at uh, Mohegan Sun. Huh? These Chamber Choirs, I'm telling you, that's a good gig. If you, you, know, you go out, yeah. sing a lot of National Anthems, you go to you know Black Wolves, Yard Goats. Sure. Make the rounds. That's it. Dodd Stadium, maybe? Who knows? That's uh, right. Let's say I get a good look there at Ajaya Brown Sr. will be jumping. Looks like for Coach Charlie Sylvan tonight. And this is, um, hey, listen, I'm excited for this game. I love coming to this gym. Got a good crowd in here tonight. Uh, it's packed. It's hot. Judging by your towels, you're going to get a workout tonight. No oh, yeah. doubt about that. Uh, Sweaty you, mess. It should be one. all right. I, listen, and we talked about this. Clearly, NFA looks to be the class of the ECC. Let's see if Fitch or Ledger can step up to the challenge. Well, the 15th of the Hutchins clan, Xander, jump, jumps <laughs> and wins it for Ledger. They'll have the first possession and a quick walk by Elijah Morton. Stutter stepped as he tried to get to the hoop. Speedy, they call him Speedy. A little too quick that time. A little too quick of a first step by Speedy. And right away, Dave Cornish going to show you a little one, two, one, one little diamond. trap, little diamond trap. Jones will be on the ball. And that long diagonal is there if they have it, the person that can make it. A lot of reversing. Very patient. Ledger not really looking to create a turnover right now, being patient with this. Bryant drives baseline, reverse no good. You know, maybe a different look, wreak a little havoc by showing you the pressure a little bit. Take yep. Fitch out of a rhythm. Yep, settle into a 2-3 now. A lot of length in the 2-3, even with uh, with Bickham down on the yeah. baseline. Boy, Hutchins has put on some muscle in the offseason oh, too, he hasn't he? Big. He's, yeah, bigger he's, than his brother. He is defined, don't tell him that. <laughs> you said that, not me. Yeah, they're both too big for me to mess around with, yep. so. Very patient here for the Falcons. Right now, just working the perimeter. Bryant's trying to find an opening. Yeah, make that extra pass, find somebody on the baseline, flash into the high post. Challenge Fitch to knock down a three-point shot or two and then and they're in the zone. Brown under down the baseline, little jumper by Bryant, no good. Weak side rebound, Graves tipped around, and no control, it'll be Colonel Basketball. Nice job by Ledger that time on a defensive end. A little shaky on the boards, but they got the ball back. Good defensive stand by the Colonels. A little straight man-to-man -man here by the Fitch Falcons. All the way to the hoop and now kick out. And we're gonna get the second travel by Elijah Morton. I don't think Dave Cornish is gonna uh, let Yeah, that he's not happy about here. that. Dave is uh, questioning the call, as he always does. There's a lot of wins, by the way, down there on that Ledger bench. Cornish, Ralph Ruggiero, and they've added Matt Rollins, one of the yeah. great New London uh, centers, uh, state championships in back-to-back -back years, 89-90. Yeah. And 90-91. Uh, Where'd they get those wins? New London High School. Oh, there you go. Matt Rollins uh, played against Sean Ellison, who was the Gatorade Player of the Year for Connecticut. And Matt ate his lunch, two snacks, and his breakfast the following day. <laughs> little bank shot by Brown is a little too strong. and. A nice shot by Ledger hitting the glass, though, Casey, and they look to push right away with Parker. Oh, uh, Jabari Jones athletic, but can't Jones. finish, and Brown high for the rebound. Slicing to the basket. First basket of the game is good by Hernandez. Daniel Hernandez gets Fitch on the board. Nice shot here by Fitch, pushing that Ledger offense out. Well past the three-point line. Great matchup, Jones and Brown. To the basket, silky smooth as Omar Whitmore. The lefty. Oh, his brother was X, X's and O's. There's that pass to the middle, dangerous. A little late, Whitmore almost got there. Pull up jumper, no good by a, ta by a Todd, and loose ball by Reeves and Hutchins underneath. Now listen, if, if, if Fitch is going to take those 8-10 footers and miss them, Ledger just got to rebound the basketball. They've got to crash the glass. And they got a size advantage right now, yes, too. Yes, they do. Nothing there. There's Bryant. Goes to his left. Little floater. No good. And a tip. Rebound. Kick out. Brown for three. No good. And a great job rebounding, though, by Fitch, though. On the, on the end line was Bryant. Colonel Crew, 
here representing tonight. Not, not, as, uh, not as impressive as NFA's Cowboy Up, but <laughs> still have some nightmares about that. Slashing to the basket, pick up, but there's a follow by Hutchins. I think we've said that a few times. Yeah, nice job by Hutch, following up. A little pressure right here by Ledger, looking to turn Fitch over. That's Dave Corner style of basketball right there. Oh, sweet floater, Hernandez. Boy, I like the way Fitch attacks the pressure, though. They don't, don't waste any time, even off of a make. They came right down and got a good look. Yeah, Yanil Hernandez is a sophomore, and he's silky. A little pressure by the Falcons. Trap. Tough place to pick up your dribble right there. Whitmore drives, kicks. Jones from the baseline. Short and out of the pack comes Hernandez. It's good look by Jones. Got to knock it down. Ten footer for the wing. Comfortable swinging around the perimeter. That three-pointer will be there if they want to take it. And there it's taken. And it's no good but a foul on Jabari Jones on the three-pointer from Hernandez. And he'll shoot three. Is it, um, is it a little odd seeing Ledger play in his zone after all these years of, you know, playing heavy ball pressure, man-to-man? -man? Is, it, is it, you know, does it not seem right to see him sit back on a 2-3? Yeah, it would be like going and watching Syracuse play man defense. Yeah. Straight, straight man. You'd say, I don't, you know, what's going on? Right. It's uh, similar to that. So three uh, free throws from Hernandez. The first one was uh, no good. Maybe he should do a floater from the uh, free throw, the free throw sure. line. Sure. And we get our first sub. Foul shot. Yep. First sub into the game, waiting to come into the game. Uh, Darrell Cagle will come into the game for Ledger. He'll come in after the second free throw, which is good. Ah, that hit all parts of the rim, top of the backboard and uh, the net. And he'll replace Jabari Jones. Cagle's uh, beefy. Got some size. I like to yep. know that from the lean, lanky Jones, Hutchins and Cagle are going to provide a little more stout size. Coach Ruggiero on the sidelines talking to Jones. Do a little coaching. Ralph. Uh, he's no stranger to, to coaching. That's a, one of the great coaches in ECC history right there. This group right here, you got to try to find a way to get Hutch the ball with Jones on the bench. Underneath, good look, and a pump fake, and Morton will go to the line. That was a good look from Bickham. Yep. Morton heady with a pump fake. Yeah, and the legend runs that. They run a back screen off the far side. They bring a guy over across to the block, and it's open most of the time. Speedy gets himself to the line for, for two. You like that nickname, Speedy? Uh, He's quick. Sure. I have no problems with that nickname. I mean, it's not, you know. Not the most original in the world. I mean, a handful of speedies. I was Couple, never. Two or three. I was never. No, you were never speedy. Never nicknamed that. Loose ball. Falcons come out with it. Nice play by Todd. Uh, Dave Cornish is urgent for his guys to hit the floor, and that's a uh, that's a hustle play. Number one goes to Fitch. Got to work that high post, and so far Ledger has not given it. They got Greaves there now. I'd run Brown on the high post. Yeah, put Brown on the high post and, and put hey, somebody look, down. There you go. Hey, look what happened. <laughs> Throw somebody on the baseline and yeah, get, get Brown make the ball. The extra pass. Yeah, there it is. Right there. There it is. Uh, there it is. Brown's got it. Spins. A little wild. Hutch with good defense. But Greaves grabs that rebound. Make that extra pass, that zip pass against the zone. He's just got to turn and shoot it when he gets it in the high post. Just turn, pull up, jumper from the foul line. Long skip pass. Nothing there. And Fitch will take their time and reset. Going to have to be deliberate against yeah, this legend zone. And I think with this group of legend colonels, Dave Cornish is okay with this right now. Three. Good. Hernandez with a triple. Sometimes you just got to pull up and, and stroke it. And that time Hernandez had an open look and took it. And that shot will be there against the zone. He's got all nine of yeah. the Falcons' points. Kago loses the ball. Brown comes out with it. High to the rim. Finishes. And the biggest lead of the game is six. And a timeout. Dave Cornish. Well, 14 turnovers in the first quarter on Saturday against Newtown. A little Jaya Brown with a little pocket pick and the delivery at the rim with the left hand. And just like that, Fitch has uh, got something cooking on a little 5-0 run. Well, 
you said when Jones is on the bench, they got to find a way to score the basketball. They got to find a way to get some offense. And uh, it really wasn't there. A little sloppy uh, on the ball on the perimeter. And, uh, you know, if Brown gets the ball in space, and he is lightning to the basket. Yeah, he can take it to the room and he can finish with his left or his right hand. And uh, he got a sloppy play and Fitch taking advantage of it. This, you know, this game was 6 5 and kind of playing right into Dave's hands a little bit because he doesn't have a team that's equipped to score a lot of points this year. But then you get a couple turnovers, next thing you know, you're down by six. So Ledger will. Jones back in the game, Casey, here too. Much needed. Whitmore. Look at Brown jump. <laughs> And yeah, he wanted to get right on Jones. They got him locked up. That's a great right. matchup. Oh, great look underneath. And a dunk from Hutchins. Beautiful look by Bickham. Yep, Bickham came off that little curl off the, off the uh, screen. Clean. There's some ugly legend basketball. Whitmore underneath. Bickham with a finish. All right, that's the recipe for legend basketball or what? A quick basket, pressure, turnover, easy buckets. Brown coming the other way, tries to dribble through. That's dangerous. Jones comes out of the pack. Coming the other way, Whitmore, left hand, and an offensive foul. Taking the charge was a Todd. Yeah, but I think after that timeout, Dave Cornish, a little fire under his crew, and you're seeing it now. The, the energy is much better for the Colonels. So we'll get a little action yep. now underneath. Again, back to the pressure, back-to-back -back turnovers, bucket and a turnover from this Ledger team. Is the diagonal, there it goes, well done. Oh, a little trickery, That's but with too many steps that time by Hernandez. Had the Euro step right there by Hernandez, a little dish, fake the dish and the drag. You can't do that, son. Ledger with a chance to tie the ball game. Whitmore taking his time. Now penetrates with a left hand. Bickham drives, hangs, blocked by Greaves. I like the take by Bickham though. Strong to the hole. Keep going back to the well, son. So underneath for the Colonels. And an outlet pass to Whitmore. Jones and Brown. Matchup to watch. You like that. I like Brown taking the responsibility of Garden Jones. Nice crossover that time by Whitmore. Another block by Greaves. Boy, oh, Hutchins working hard down there, isn't he? Yeah, he and Greaves are battling. Jones thought Jones about it. Pull up that three. Oh, what Ball a shake and bake move by Jones. Hangs in the air and he'll go to the line or they're going to say it's on the floor. What an explosive move by Jabari Jones. And you see Jones calling out Brown a little bit. Come step to me in the, uh, the quick explosive move and just couldn't finish at the rim. A little bit of a uh, gamesmanship going on between the two of them. Yeah. Bryant back into the ball game, replacing Greaves. Nice job, Hutchins underneath with the dunk. Nice feed, great inbound play by the Colonels. That's too easy that time. The seal by Hutch in the delivery, the two-handed style. Easy buckets, Casey. We talked about it in the open. Five seconds, long three, no good. Weak side rebound, Jones, three-quarter shot at the buzzer. No good, we're tied at 11 at the end of one. Second quarter action coming up. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. My biggest sporting influence would be my older brother, Josue. Uh, since I was younger, I've always looked up to him, and he's the reason why I play basketball, and he's taught me everything I know. My older brother, Trevor, is my biggest sporting influence just because uh, we played a lot growing up, and he's always been better than me at most things. My biggest sporting influence would be my mom because um, growing up, she just sacrificed a lot of her own time and money and energy to make sure I was getting to and from where I needed to be for basketball or football, whatever sport it was that we were playing at the time, but she gave a lot so that I could have some fun.
Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile and your health are our top priority. They're located at 177 Boston Post Road or at waterforddentalhealth.com. Well, 11-11, and Ledger ended that first quarter on a little 6-0 run, and it was easy buckets and turnovers that got himself in a position to tie the game. A couple of inbounds dunks by Hutchins, a turnover here or there, and I think that last two and a half minutes, that's what we're used to seeing out of Ledger basketball. Well, there's two different issues and two different types of pressure that Ledger's imposing. They have to make baskets, because on the make, they can go into that diamond pressure yeah. and try to create turnovers, which they've done. But once Fitch breaks the pressure, then they've got to find a way to generate offense against that 2-3. Now, uh, Hernandez has had good looks from the wing, sure. but they haven't been able to get Brown involved. And so it's a, kind of a double-edged sword here. They're going to give that three. If Hernandez can start knocking those threes down, that 2-3 becomes kind of problematic. And, and, I, and I think that that's what they'll give him, though. Uh, horrible. Bad horrible pass by that. Bickham. A Todd up ahead. And that's a, I'm going to say he was tipped out of bounds. I thought it was a travel, but yep. Yep. it'll be Fitch basketball. Yeah, well, um, moving your feet without putting the basketball on the ground, so it didn't travel. Well, they're going to say he never had possession of it. That's okay. Why. Brown on the baseline. Trap reversal. Dangerous pass. Ledger getting into those passing lanes. Yeah, quicker. Much quicker. A little more sharp this evening of the Colonels. They got Chris Kershaw, the Falcons, doing the game. Running high post. Now he comes sets a high screen. I love that. And then flash to the post. You can do that against zone. Not a, you don't see enough right. screens against zone. Zones can, are very vulnerable to screens. Helps free up passing lanes. You can screen for the back door, too, Absolutely. on the back end. Kershaw in trouble. That's what you don't want to do against the zone is dribble out of it. Three is no good, but the follow. They got his own. And blocked out of bounds by Hutchins. Hutch is playing big tonight. Hernandez took that three, got his own, tried to put it back in, and Hutchins blocked it. Hernandez played well. You now, Colin Anderson's a good shooter as well. The sophomore just checked into the ball game. We'll see if they put him out on that wing. And the long inbounds pass will go to Hernandez. And, yep, they're going to put... They're going to put Anderson right over on the wing. Ledger's going to have to step out on him. There he is. See, and they go right to him. They recognize Shooter right away. But that means penetration's available. Yep. Now Brown will operate up top. Nice zip pass. Kershaw wasn't expecting it. And he goes and dribbles it off his foot. And it'll be Ledger basketball. Well, you seem like if Fitch could actually get bodies in position, like they've got Anderson and maybe put Brown down on the baseline, that extra pass could probably beat that ledger zone. You know, pass the ball, pass the ball, get the defense on their heels a little bit. Jones, oh, a great defensive play by Hernandez. He gets rewarded by Brown, and he tried to get a little too fancy, and we turn it over the other way. Now out of the pack with numbers. numbers. Layup is good from Idris Umarani. A little too cute on one end by the Falcons, and Ledger cleans up, and here comes that pressure again. Reverse the basketball. There it is. There's the open shot they were looking for. High, arcing three. No good by Anderson. And Whitmore comes out of the pack, spins, drives, dish, and a pretty basket by Bickham. Omar Whitmore with some fancy showmanship. Yeah, we got a 10-0 run going on right now here, too, by the Ledger Colonels. Trailed 6-5. Right, now here comes Brown on Hutchins. Good athleticism, left hand, oh, offensive it. foul as Xander Hutchins took the charge. All the little things that you need to be done in a basketball game right now, Ledger is doing, they're bringing in energy, they're, they're hitting the floor, they're creating turnovers and easy scoring chances. Well, they were looking for, Ledger was looking for who that third guard was gonna be. They like Bickham yeah. and Whitmore out there. They started with Morton, but I think they like what uh, Umarani has done here with his minutes. I think it's by committee, don't you think? Whoever's, uh, yeah. whoever's playing well at that moment, that's who's gonna ride. And I think Fitch is trying to figure out who the shooter's gonna be and how they're gonna get some offense. Yeah. We know Fitch is resilient. Bickham, swing, now Whitmore drives. Dangerous. Easy. Jones, athletic at the rim. Johnny on the spot, Jabari Jones. This game was 11 to five, now it's 17 to 11. And another turnover. 
Throwing it out of bounds is Hernandez. And I'm surprised, you surprised Charles Silva hasn't taken a timeout? Yes. Yep. They gotta be careful not to let this get away from them. Yeah, he's calm his team down a little bit. And yeah, they came back against New London, and, and you know, not to take a shot at my Whalers, but if the Whalers have demonstrated one thing this year is that ha they have had an inability to finish basketball games. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Ledger, you know, I don't think Ledger might have the same problem in terms of finishing. That's a nice move by Bickham. Great screen from Hutchins. Bickham with a left hand and finish. Oh, Great what, screen. Is, what an aggressive style of ball by the Colonels. And there's a turnover. We're going to get a foul out. Oh, we're going to get a reach. And Jaden Bickham woofing a little bit down there. A little, little gamesmanship. We got a ball game here. Him and Hernandez woofing a little bit. It's been a long time, my friend, since the Fitch Falcons have made a bucket. Listen, they're 6-0, and but we said these are, game, these are now all brand new for them. Every time they step up and play a team as the season goes on, yeah. it's brand new. High post. Greaves, that's a nice job. Drive, a little pull-up J in the paint. Kershaw Buried by yeah. right, Kershaw. Yeah, good take right there. That, that tough two, as they would call it, the old 10-foot pull-up jumper. Casey, you said you step inside the zone. Pitch there, you got to take it. Bickham with a nice job taking it to the basket. He draws the foul on Hernandez. And he's playing with uh, a lot of confidence right now is Jaden Bickham. Good energy tonight from the Colonels. Yeah, I, I, like, I just like how Ledger's playing, how aggressive they're playing. Started off a little slow, but very aggressive right now. They are trying to get to the rim. I love the screens. And, and it all starts with Hutchins and Jones on the baseline. They spread the floor here against this man-to-man -man defense. They like this mismatch. Oh, great anticipation by Hernandez. Two on one. Hangs, basket is good, and the foul. Momentum killer. That's just a lazy pass that time. That's Hernandez. What does he have, 11 points now? Hernandez going to the rim, trying to go for his 12th point tonight. He had their first nine. Yeah. And Elijah Morton will come back in the game, replacing Speedy. Idris Umarani. Speedy. Free throw, no good. And now oh, Jones goes high for the rebound. Crossover. Hangs. Floater, no good, but a beautiful move. Jabari Jones is going to be a scorer. Got to get back on D if you're the Colonels. Uh, Kershaw, reverse layup is good. And that was just Ledger getting lazy. Watching Jones go up, missed the layup, and they got beat down the court. And it's now a two-point game. Fitch with a little run. Oh, I'd get out of the way here. Clear out for Jones, high screen. And we're gonna get a moving screen on Hutchins. Hutchins may have paid the price a little bit on a high ball screen. Well, and we're gonna see a substitution for Ledger. You know, when the, how do you get bigger? Well, you bring in Daryl McGraw, you go from 6'5 to 6'7. Yep. You saw him in the JV game, and he was a menace in the JV game. And they're going to put him on the wing of the 2 3. Now switch him off with Jones and get him in the middle. There you go. Good communication. Todd drives. Good dish. Greaves can't finish. But he saves it right to Whitmore, and Whitmore is going to push. No numbers, and he wisely pulls it out. Nice dump down, McGraw, and we're going to get a little shove. Well, you got McGraw in the game, and you got, you know, Morton on the wing. If Ledger could find a way to play some inside-outside basketball and just, you know, when that ball goes into the block, comes back out, knock down a 12-footer would be an extra added dimension to this team. Cagle back in the ball game. He'll give Jones a breather. Greaves comes out and Bryant back in. Here's my question. Who's the shooter for Ledger? I understand Jones and Hutchins, but why are we, why are we not packing it in and making them shoot the ball? I agree. Dump inside McGraw. Beautiful block by Bryant on the big kid. Up ahead now, Bryant running the floor. High in the air, he's fouled. McGraw on the foul from the backside, but that was all Trey Bryant. Yeah, all motor that time by Trey Bryant. Gets himself to the rim, can't finish. You know, Fitch is playing this man-to-man, -man, this aggressive man-to-man, -man, and all Ledger's doing is clearing it out and creating space, and whatever, yeah, whatever mismatch they like, whether it's Whitmore or Jones, whoever they like is the mismatch, 
If but I, they have nobody knocking down shots. If I were Fitch, I might take a cue from Ledger's book and pack it in 2-3, yeah. yeah. not let Jones get to the basket. It, does, it takes away uh, Hutchins and make somebody shoot the basketball. Yeah, you have to force either Whitmore or, and or Bickham to knock down a jumper. No, I mean, I'm, I don't have the youth coaching uh, pedigree that the sports doctor has. <laughs> but yeah. if we both agree, must yep. be something to it. Bryant knocks down one of two, and Hutchins back in the ball game, cleans it up. Lost a few games or two myself in my career. That's the extra pass. They got to make it the corner of the Kegel. Got to move the basketball. Here's that clear out that we've been seeing. Whitmore. Now he gets that screen from Bickham, but no, no roll. You got to either roll or pop off that screen. See, there's, not, there's no outside shot there. There's the kick. Bickham for three. Good. Oh, you got to have it. You got to have it. We talked about the drive and the kick. Cable gave it up. Bickham knocked it down. Trying to retaliate. Three-pointer from Anderson. Hit the roof. Got numbers. Whitmore. Lefty. Over Bryant for two. Oh. Oh, my. Omar. And a return floater on the other side by Jabril Roman. And he'll shoot the bonus. All right, Fitz doing a lot of this with Ajaya Brown on the bench too, so some extra bodies stepping up for Coach Charles Sylvan. And have you noticed Jabari Jones can't stay on the bench long for Ledger? No. They're a whole different team when he's not in the basketball game. I mean, do you want him on the bench long? But I'm saying, I mean, as soon as he gets yeah. to the bench, uh, Fitch you know, does something good. One thing that Fitch does not do good, however, is shoot the ball from the free throw line. I want to push you if you're the Colonels. Umarani. That's a walk that Bickham gets away with. High in the air, floater no good. And a strong rebound by Kershaw. Zip up ahead it goes, Anderson. There's Anderson on the baseline. And a bad pass, oh, stolen by Bryant. He can't finish. Colonels had a chance, Jones wanted to go up to the races. Omarani will draw the foul on Anderson. Got again, a little bit of a helter-skelter pace here. It'll be one-on-one on one for the Colonels. Uh, but Ledyard finds it a way to get scoring chances, whether it's you know, get to the rim or shoot free throws. And again, it's, it's certainly a much more aggressive Colonel team than we saw on Saturday. We're here with Mike tomorrow, by the way. Saturday, it looked like they were listless. They just were. Watching, just watching the, the highlights, it just looked like they had no zip. Like an, like an NBA team on the back of a home, you know, back-to-back uh, -back night. All the way to the basket, Bickham can't finish with the left hand, but there's Jones underneath, and he'll draw the foul. That's a little too easy. That good move by Bickham, couldn't finish, and Jones goes up and gets the, uh, the dirty laundry. He'll get himself to the free throw line. And that's what athleticism and staying active and, and, and hustle plays will do for you. And again, if you're not knocking down your jump shot or if you're not getting scoring opportunities for the field, Casey, get yourself to the line. I'll tell you what, Jabari Jones, only a sophomore. We saw some of it last year as a freshman. Mm. He's going to be a, I think he's going to be a scorer. Watch him over the next couple of years. He will develop. I mean, he's already athletic. He's got a good touch. Watch out for him. Five point Colonel lead here as we head into halftime, under a minute remaining. Fitch looks comfortable trying to work for it towards the last shot of the half. Yeah, because that three pointer is there for Hernandez instead of Todd from straight away, no good. Hernandez fakes, drives baseline, finds Bryant, and he finishes. A little floater in the lane, cuts it to three, and now Ledger has a chance. Up ahead it goes to Kegel. In the corner. And that's off of Kegel, out of bounds, and the Falcons will get it with 20 seconds remaining. And Anderson and Greaves are gonna check into the ball game. A little offense on there for the Falcons. Colin Anderson, number 15, Shane Greaves. So 20 seconds remaining. Let's see if Fitch 
Holds for the last shot, down three. Inside Greaves, outside Anderson, open look, three, got it! Anderson. Colin Anderson ties it at 25. Whitmore drives, hangs, left-hander at the buzzer is good! Oh my, Omar! And the Colonels take a two-point lead into halftime. The sports doctor will be with Ledger coach Dave Cornish. Sports doctor. Well, Dave, you guys got up to a slow start, but you take a lead into the locker room. What was the difference after being down 11-5 to take a lead into halftime? Just the energy. We had to pick up the energy and uh, play, and shots started going in for us. That's all. Now, one of the things we talked about are easy buckets. Do you have to continue to pressure, get some easy scoring opportunities in the second half? Absolutely. Absolutely. We get, that's our offense. We got to you know, create the offense um, from our defense. What's one of the things you want to work on and talk to the kids about? Uh, guarding number five. We, uh, our zone, we have to make sure we identify the shooters. Good luck in the second half, Dave. Thank you. All right. Casey? Two-point ledger lead here at halftime. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. For me personally, I'd go with Derrick Rose because similar to him, I've experienced many injuries that put me out some seasons. I had to go to physical therapy for months, uh, ACL, meniscus tears, stuff like that. So to see him come back to the league after so many years of putting his career on hold, it kind of like it kind of motivates me to do the same thing because obviously I'm not at the level of the NBA, but for a high schooler and I'm trying to make it into some school, get some recognition. Uh, it's good to see someone who has had the same struggles as me come back to the league and put on the show like, like how he has. My biggest sport of influence, I'm going to have to say LeBron James because like, it's bigger than basketball. He does a lot for the community, and he also made a school, so that's, that's pretty good. Uh, my biggest sporting influence would be Derek Jeter. I mean, I love playing baseball. Um, plays the position I play, and I look up to him. I think he's a great leader. We are back at halftime here at Ledger High School, two-point Colonel's lead. And it's weird not having this guy on the floor. Uh, when I say an all-time, all-game-day guy, Ken Turner from Ledger joins us. And uh, I see we got a little we got a little gear. We got the yeah, Hawks. We got the Hawks right here, you know. Hartford Hawks. So first thing, last time we saw you, you were a little, a little nicked up. You had some back problems. Let's start there. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Uh, I sat out a lot of the summertime, uh, rested my back. Uh, then I came back in the fall feeling good, haven't had any issues since, so that was really the, the key to the fall, uh, making sure I was healthy, be able to get back on the mound, full strength, and feel good now. Now, fall baseball is a big deal, especially at a Division One school like Hartford. Uh, were you out on the mound in the fall, and, and, where, and how were you feeling? Where were you at? Um, I came onto the mound about halfway through uh, the fall. I was still sitting out a little bit for my back. I uh, just wanted to make sure that, didn't, didn't want to rush it, I wanted to make sure that it was uh, 100%. And then uh, about halfway through the fall, I got back on the mound. I was able to pitch in a scrimmage against URI. And we had an alumni scrimmage. I was able to get on the mound for that, too. Um, and everything else, I was still able to practice with the team whenever, whenever you know, we did uh, stuff at practice. So feeling good. Now, you were part of, you know, arguably the best baseball conference in the state of Connecticut. I mean, you know, the more state championships come out of the ECC than any other place. What's been the biggest uh, learning experience, biggest difference uh, moving from uh, the ECC into a Division One program like Hartford? Um, I'd say you know, the competition, the ECC has great competition, um, but you can really see all the other good players from not even from the state, just from especially at Hartford, you know, there's a lot of New England guys from the state. Um, and then, you know, I look forward to facing other other players from like Florida, and from different uh, states uh, throughout the year. So we were talking earlier, we were trying to figure out, you might have more appearances on game day than anyone in history, because I think I'm right here, we've covered you in four different sports, yeah. soccer, football, basketball, and baseball. So uh, of all of those, What's your favorite uh, appearance, memory uh, of your time on game day? Sophomore uh, I'd have Emily to Evans. Oh. Uh, I'd have to say uh, the ECC Emily championship Sophomore. my sophomore year. We faced Waterford, Senior packed Andy house. That was, that was a great experience. Uh, we were able to get the Senior win that day, too. Um, that, I'd say that's probably my favorite moment throughout Senior all of high school, Davis. all of the sports that I've played. Um, so I'd, I'd have to go with that. 
You know, I, we talked with Mikey Pacetto last week, and one of the things that was interesting for him, uh, he played in front of 500 to 1,000 people every night in high school, and then he went and plays college uh, basketball and plays in front of, you know, 45 people. You can hear a pin drop. Uh, similarly, I think, you know, that's some of the experiences of our of, of, of basketball. Uh, what's the status of the baseball program at Hartford? Uh, what are the coaches telling you about where you know where you guys are from a competition standpoint? Uh, I think we're going to definitely compete uh, in our conference. We'll definitely compete. Hopefully, get a conference championship. You know, that's the goal. Um, and then we want to be able to compete with the teams that we play early on in the season. We go down south. Uh, we have a couple of uh, good opponents we'll be playing. We play Stetson. We play UNC Greensboro. We want to be able to compete with those teams, and, and that'll really help us in our conference play uh, going on towards the end of the year. Right now on the floor, uh, Ledger is honoring its girls' soccer program. Uh, your time here at Ledger, you played four different sports, but talk a little bit about the uh, environment, you know, sort of the uh, the family, the community aspect that you had here at Ledger. I know your family very involved uh, in that. Talk a little bit about the community of Ledger sports. Uh, it's a great community. You can see here, you know, it's, there's a lot of Ledger fans here. Um, it's not just at the boys' basketball games. You always know, see them at the girls' basketball games, girls' soccer games, boys' soccer games. You know, any sporting event, you always see a, a good crowd here. And Mr. Bunicler does a great job uh, with the Class Act Council and trying to expand uh, upon the other sports. And I think it's going to continue to grow. So I'm going to use you as an example. We talk all the time about specialization. Now, you're, I mean, you're about as successful as you're going to get. You got a Division I opportunity to play baseball, but you played four different sports in high school. How do you think playing football, soccer, basketball helped you uh, towards your ultimate goal, which was playing Division One baseball? Uh, you know, each sport, uh, they contribute to, you know, each one. You know, you have the conditioning of basketball, the footwork of soccer, um, just the stamina of each sport. They all carry into one another and then a different aspect, you know, you meet new people, you start to form connections with people and, you know, it all just carries into one thing to the next. So. Do you think the competition, the, the playing in, in the in front of thousands of people, the hostile environment of basketball helps translate over when you're on the mound and you know you're staring down a, a Jared Burroughs and you need a big out? I mean, can you channel sort of that? You know, you've been under the in the fires before. Yeah, like a, a three-two count uh, with maybe like the bases loaded is like equivalent to having a free throw down by two. You're at the free throw line. There's a lot of equivalencies and uh, the crowd, you know, yelling at you and stuff. It's it's a it's a good connection sport to sport so we've got you know youngsters watching right now and other kids from you know that are maybe uh, in, in middle school and they say you know I man I want to go and, I, and, and play college sports what would be your advice to those kids who are looking to move on and play college sports uh, I'd say play as many sports at the high school level as you can and once one big thing when I was being recruited it was uh, a lot of the college coaches liked that I played multiple sports in high school and I've played it throughout my whole life um, I would, that's that's the biggest thing that I felt so how long are you home? When do you have to head back? I have to go back to 21st, so I still have about two weeks left, which is nice. It's a lot different than uh, in high school, having only like a week off. So now I can ask you, is this the last Hutchins? I feel like I've been broadcasting a Hutchins for about 12 years. Is there any um, more? I think, yeah, there's two girls, I'm pretty sure, that, uh, that are still they're still coming up. They're, they're still coming up. There's, uh, I think, 10 total of them. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. They can run their own five. They can run their own yeah, four basketball great game. great family. Trevor comes home uh, September, I believe. Excellent. So. That's good. We'll be looking forward to seeing him back yeah. here again. Speaking of the Hutchins, Xander did a great job in the first half. Tell me what Two you dunks. saw from Ledger in that first half. I thought they controlled the tempo really well. Um, they had a good run beginning of the second quarter. Hopefully they can uh, do that again and go on another run. You want to be out there? I wish, yeah. I miss <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Kenny, thanks for joining us for Thank a few you. minutes. All game day great. Kenny Turner, we got about two minutes before we're back. Enjoy this video from game day. I guess one thing I'm good at away from sports is cooking. I cook a lot in the house with my sisters and my, my parents. This is something that people say I'm weird for, but uh, I really like tennis. Tennis is a fun sport, and I practice a lot on my off time. Not many people know this, but uh, I'm a pretty talented ping pong player. I have a table at my house, and uh, I'm, I'm the king of the house right now. So Away from sports? I'm going to say singing. I can sing. I got... I got some vocals, you know I me. Mean? Yeah, I can do a little something, something. I'm, I used to be in the church choir, actually, so. Uh, I'm a very gifted singer. I'm really, really good. How good? Uh, I've been called the songbird of my generation by people that have heard me. That good. 
After a big win for a celebratory meal, I'd go to Subway and get a teriyaki chicken sub. Definitely Chick-fil-A. I'll get some nuggets, some Polynesian sauce, maybe a milkshake if I played well, if I earned it. I'm going to Chick-fil-A and I'm getting the number two with no pickles because pickles are gross. I'd probably go downtown to Margaritas. Ah, uh, that's gotta be Moe's. I'm going to Valentino's, definitely. Mostly because I get the discount, but I usually got buffalo chicken pizza with some ranch dip. That's it. After a big win, I'll definitely be going to uh, Wendy's. Four for four, you can never go wrong. It's cheap and it fills you up. After a win, I just go home. And sometimes we get pizza, but usually I just have leftovers and stuff. I go to my grandma's house and she cooks homemade. I never really go after a win. I just go home, get in the bed, have some sleep for dinner. The question I have is how can Xander Hutchins go home for leftovers? How are there any leftovers There's like left? 16 kids there in the household. Uh, I, I've never had a Wendy's four for four, but I've had a slice of pizza or two in my day. Casey leading scores at the half for Fitch. Hernandez with 11 for Ledger Beckham with nine. Hutchins with six. And on the out-of-town scoreboard, surprise, surprise, the Waterford Lancers, 32, your New London Whalers, 21 at the half. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Waterford, I thought Waterford showed some stuff uh, against NFA. Uh, you know, they outplayed NFA for, you know, about half of the game. But they just couldn't overcome, you know, the depth of NFA. And ultimately, NFA had uh, too much firepower for them. But I, I still think Waterford will figure it out. You and I both agreed on that game that they will be uh, a, t a much different team come the end of the season. So that big uh, basket to end the half by Whitmore put Ledger up two and a block in the early going, but Bryant comes down with it and he'll pull up and no, no, doesn't get the go. Out of bounds, it'll stay Falcon basketball. You know, the one thing Fitch is doing quite well in this position, he did it in the first half, well, they're keeping balls alive on the offensive glass and surprising because of the size of, you know, Hutchins and, you know, Jones' athletic ability. Greaves for three. Hey, Sheamus! Hell, a miscommunication there between Jones and Bickham on the turnover. <laughs> oh, boy. If I could just broadcast kids named Sheamus all the time, I'd be a happy guy. Yeah. And they're chanting, let's Time go, out. Sheamus. Timeout. Legend. Right, yeah, Coach. Dave Cornish is hot right now. What would you think of the comments he made at halftime? Uh... Yeah, I think he was very just across the board with it. He was kind of close to the vest. Energy. Yeah, energy, yeah. Need more energy. Yeah. Well, what I will say is this. He's got a, his, look at, he got a, more of a shine going right there than you do. I mean, I'm not sure about you that. You guys are working up lathers here tonight. The thing about it is this. Ledger has a distinct advantage in size. Yeah. And it does not appear that their effort is the same as Fitch's effort. Fitch is getting... Quick leapers, uh, you know, Atad is a quick leaper. Brown is a quick leaper. Hernandez yep. is a quick leaper. Bryant, and they're getting to these rebounds that I think Dave feels they should be his. Right, box out, and the only guy that's a quick leaper over there really is, uh, is Jones. And he is that. There it is, high post, Brown kicks it back out. I think he's got to turn and shoot that, but Hutchins closed it well. A little surprised Anderson's not in the game. I thought he really gave them that yep. three-point threat. Although Greaves did knock down the triple. Let's see if they try to get him on the baseline again. There's a zip. Greaves, baseline, Bryant. Blocked from behind by Hutchins and it off of Jones. Yep. But I like the I passing. like the extra pass. Yeah, I like the extra pass. A little dump down on the baseline and then Hutchins coming to clean up the mess. But... That extra pass will give them an open look on the backside. The reverse, the reverse diagonal is open mm. against the two-three every time. Reverse the direction and go backwards, and it's always going to be open there on the baseline. Yes, sir. And teaching that all the way back in fifth grade. You know, no, just know that that diagonal to the block is always going to be there. I love the, I love the flash to the high post, but we got they got to make something happen instead of just skipping these passes across court. Underneath, Greaves can't finish. Tip, no good. And there's a strong rebound by Bickham, and he'll push. Quick hands the other direction. Hernandez up ahead of the pack. Hangs in the air, and he draws the foul on Bickham. 
Well, Bickham comes down the court with a head of steam case. He gets taken out about the free throw line. He's basically got nowhere to go with the basketball. So you're pushing the basketball with no real purpose or intention. Your head's not up. He's not looking around for a passer or a score on the wing. He's just he's bringing the ball down just to bring it down. You know, and he gets caught within no man's land. He gets his pocket picked from the back end, and he got two free throws on the other end. Hernandez, much better free throw that time. Hernandez is very, very quick uh, around the basketball, and he anticipates. He, he yeah. is very much into the passing lanes. Uh, so you've got to be patient with a kid like that. Let him overplay. Yeah, and these guys, too, with the ball, they leave themselves exposed on the back end as ball handlers. And uh, Brown, and another one, and that's Coach Cornish is going to lose his mind. Jabari Jones, two opportunities. Yeah. And Brown just outworked him for the basketball. Yep, 5 0 run out of the locker room here. Bickham dumps it down, and Hutchins will get the foul on Greaves. He had good position. And we're going to see Domake Johnson into the ball game. Jones is going to have a seat. His second. Still talking to from Ralph. Earful from Ralph. And Matt Rollins. Tamik Johnson, and it's going to be out of bounds. And going to get a little shove there on the base on the uh, end line. It's funny when when you know when coaches coaching, when Ralph is coaching, and then the players got something to say. He don't want to hear it. You know, he's basically saying, "Listen, this is what you need to do." So well, a, you know, a player is going to plead his case. Coach, it wasn't my fault. You've been in that position. You're a coach too. You yeah. don't want to hear it. Yeah, Jones just outworked him. I mean, and so you, you got to just sit there and be quiet and nod your head and say, yeah. "Yes, coach." How you see it all the time. They want to they tell you what they did. No, listen, I'm going to no, tell, tell you what you, you did. Yeah. Baseline, pull up, in and out, and tipped around, and Brown comes down with it. Again, outworking it. Brown wants it back. Instead, a Todd for three. No good. And Hutchins with a very, very strong rebound. That's what they need. Got to get up and get it. Whitmore, zip pass. Bickham, no good. Johnson with a rebound, good position. Ah. And we're going to get a backcourt instead. No, Brown. And he's going to go to the line for two. That's just hustle by Brown. And Umarani gave up on it. Yeah, he did. And Brown wanted it. A lunch pail play by Ajayo Brown. Talk about energy. If Ledger brought the energy in the first half, Fitch has brought it out of the locker room. Well, this looks a little bit more like the Ledger team I saw in the highlights on Saturday, which mm. was just kind of like sloppy you know, and just listless, like they, you know, like they weren't all that interested. We're gonna see Jaden Luther check into the ball game, and yeah, Omarani's gonna have he's gonna be the net. Ralph's gonna lose. They don't have any space next to him. Yeah, you know, Matt Rollins is gonna grab him right there and coach him up a little bit. Hard to believe, but Fitch has a chance to go up. They're up five, and there's a rebound. Again by the Falcons. Kershaw controls it. Falcons just outworking the Colonels. Yep. Reeves, long three, in and out. And there's Bickham goes up, and it's stolen by Brown, but we're going to get a foul on the reach. But right now, Fitch, like you said, just outworking Ledger. Getting all the loose balls, out hustling them. Yeah, Ledger hasn't scored yet here in the third quarter. They got to get the ball into. Well, there's Whitmore. They got to get the ball. There's a nice pass underneath. Johnson misses the bunny. Got to score that. The other way, Brown slices. And we're going to get a foul on Hutchins. They said Hutchins was out of bounds. All he was right. laying out of bounds and touched the ball. A little, little out of control that time by Ajaya Brown. Hutchins a little confused. McGraw coming in for a little more size. And they're going to go right match up with Bryant. Bryant will come right in the game as well. So now we've the first time we've seen Hutchins and McGraw mm. on the floor at the same time. So Ledge, uh, Fitch rather will match it up, and they'll get Bryant into the ball game to try to match. McGraw is tall. That's 6'7", in case. Yeah, that's tall. 6'7". And long, 6-7. Fitch struggling to get it in. They do finally to Brown. Like the ball movement here by the Falcons. Bryant, kick. 
And they'll reset. You could get Brown to spring up from the wing and knock down a three after that kick out. A Todd for three. Back iron. What a hustle rebound by Hernandez. Zip corner. Brown back up top. Hernandez for three. No good. And McGraw pulls down the rebound. Uh, much needed. Whitmore. And out of bounds, it'll be tipped by F uh, Fitch, and it'll stay Ledger ball. Whitmore, the, the lefty, can get to the rim. Cried for a foul there a little bit. Kershaw and Anderson check into the ball game. Todd and Brown will take a seat. And you look at this Colonel set right now, and you say, where are the points going to come from? There's a guy right there. A little bank oh, shot floater oh, by oh, Whitmore oh, and the foul. Take that, sports doctor. They're going to come for me. Three-point play here, possibly convent the conventional style. They needed those points desperately. Ledger taking everybody off the line except for McGraw. Whitmore knocks it down. Well, Ledger's first baskets, first points in the second half. Three-point play, draws them within two. Over four minutes. Anderson, he wants that three. Swing it back around to him. It's there. There it is. Three ball, back iron and good. The bank is open. Whitmore, crossover, gets a screen from Hutchins. And a block underneath by Greaves. Yeah, Whitmore got bailed out that time. I thought Greaves had good position. He was looking to kick out for the three. But Whitmore is another one of these kids. It seems like he's pounding the ball a little too much. Do something with it. Now, if Ledger doesn't find a way to get a ball at the rim here with yeah. these two bigs, double screen. There is a lob into Hutchins. Spin and a great job of defense by Bryant. He had a little under shove that time. And again, Ledger, no pressure here in the second half. I mean, obviously, only one basket, and they were so successful in the first half with that press and trap and turning you over. They haven't put themselves to put themselves in that position as can't, of yet. Well, you can't press if you don't. No, make you the hoop. can't. And you know, Fitch is scoring these points with a Jai Brown on the bench. Yeah. And Fitch is patient right now at the lead. Oh, bad turnover as Anderson threw it over the top of Hernandez. Yeah, Brown was on the bench a lot in that comeback win over yep. New London as well. But look at him. That's what you like right there. Leadership on the bench. Yep. Hannah Todd, the seniors. They got to get the ball. I mean, right now, McGraw, that's a nice look underneath. Whitmore can't finish, but McGraw with the rebound, and that's what they need to do. Take advantage of that size. Long three, no good. McGraw and Kershaw battles for the rebound and pulls it down. Nice look. Kershaw, reverse layup is good. Uh, Chris Kershaw. That's Bickham getting beat off the dribble that time by... Hernandez, and then the delivery for Hernandez on the assist. Whitmore. Moore and underneath, a nice look. McGraw can't finish. Hutchins can't finish. Out of bounds, and it'll be Falcon basketball. Now just relax out there, McGraw. Take your time. You're six foot seven. How about dunk it? Yeah, catch it high, shoot it high. How about just go dunk it? That's, yeah. Why are we floating it? We're going to see Jones back into the ball game. I mean, Ledger has three points in the second half so far. Long three, but we're going to get a travel. Kershaw moved his feet before the shot. A break there for Ledger.
stick him, and he's got a Kershaw on his hip, and he'll draw the foul. Well, with 120 left to go here in the third quarter, everything Ledger did after being down 11-5, they're not doing in the third quarter. Yeah. They're not creating uh, easy buckets. They're not trapping because they're not making shots. They've only got one field goal in a, in a three-point play. So anything that worked for them down the stretch, they haven't done here yet in the second half. And they certainly haven't rebounded the basketball. No, despite their size advantage. Hutchins, we get a foul on the ground uh, <coughs> on the floor as Jaden Luther got the ball to Hutchins and a little shove. Maybe an extra pass that time by Luther, maybe one too many passes, rise up, hit that little six footer, or little make, floater. Or make the pass earlier. Hmm. He got himself into traffic and then the pass was sort of contested. I think he gets, gets the ball into Hutchins a little earlier. Nice spin, Whitmore, great look underneath. And Jones finishes. That's a good look for yep. Whitmore. And finally, the layup drops for the Colonels. Under a minute here in quarter number three. They got to watch out where Anderson is at all times. Yep, Jones is on his wing, and he sees him. Fitch should be uh, happy to hold for the last shot here. 33 seconds left to go in the, in the quarter. Yep. And they're moving Anderson up high, so that's exactly what they're going to do. They'll let this thing run down. What do you want to go, about 15 seconds? Yeah, bleed it to about 11, 12, yeah. And make your move. Get the last shot. Don't allow a leak out by the Colonels if there's a miss. And they're going to let it get all the way down to 10. And they're going to let it down to 8, 7. And they're going with six seconds. Atad drives, kicks, baseline Kershaw. No good, high rebound by Jones. And that'll get us to the end of three quarters, a five-point Falcon lead. Fourth quarter action coming up. You're watching Game Day Live on day.com. Darth Vader, just everyone's bound down to me, you know? I'll definitely be Yoda because he's a wise man. He knows what he's talking about. He knows everything. Oh, Boba Fett, for sure. He's so cool. Jabba the Hutt. Ah, uh, just a big guy. To be honest, I'd probably be Kylo Ren because I think his lightsaber looks mad dope, but I wouldn't fully commit to the dark side. Um, I've never actually seen Star Wars, but um, probably one of those dudes with the thing they can move where they can move stuff with their hands. The Force, what is that? That that's not one of those guys. That would just be cool moving stuff around. I would just mess with people. Um, I wouldn't be any of them. I'd be myself. I'd be the best character there is. So you're Charles Sylvan right now in the Fitch huddle. What are you telling your Falcons here? Five point lead going into the fourth quarter. Patience. Patience on offense. Don't turn the ball over and keep, keep hammering the glass. Uh, I like what I saw coming out of the locker room and let's just keep working. Let's just keep doing our thing. All right, conversely, you're Dave Cornish. You're over there in the ledger huddle right now. What are you telling your Colonel? I gotta find a way to crank it up a little bit. I gotta find a way to create some easy buckets and we gotta keep the Falcons off the glass. It's as simple as that. Well, five point game is nothing. And the way these teams can turn each other over, mm. uh, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Let me ask you this. Would it surprise you if Fitch won this game by 12? No. Would it surprise you if Ledger had won this game by 10? No. That's, that's, that's yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I don't think that that Ledger can go four minutes and five seconds without scoring a bucket like they did in the you know third quarter. They gotta find a way to get on the board quickly, get a bucket, and then get into their pressure. There's a great screen by Jones. Whitmore to the basket. But no good. Jones follows. No good. Hutchins with a follow. And he'll go to the line. And there's the rebounding you talked about. Yep. Get to the line. Yeah, get Whitmore to the rim. He doesn't make the basket, but then you got Jones and Hutchins crashing. Am I going to have Hutchins make these two free throws, or at least the second one, so you can set up your pressure on the back end? Boy, they're working awfully hard and missing some layups tonight, aren't they? Whether it's uh, McGraw, whether it's Jones, whether it's Hutchins, a lot of missed layups down there for Ledger. Against, uh, against a Falcon team that's really not contesting a whole lot. No. They're just missing layups. Whitmore has got a a little bleed on the finger, so. That is a front court advantage right now for the Colonels. Oh, I mean, Hutchins alone. And, and Jones. And Brown's not in the game right now, and neither is Greaves. 
Bryant's the only real size on the floor right now. Whitmore will check back in. He was technically out of the game for a free throw to get a Band-Aid on his finger as the Ledger cheerleaders and Floor Hutchins. Before. And no pressure by the Colonels. Surprises me a little bit. And if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. They're going in with man-to-man -man defense here, too. Right right a trap. trap. Right. Nice job right, the, right, right away of breaking it. Drive. Nice Not call turnover. by Kershaw, but he turns it over. If yep. they're going to play man, I want to see. I bet you Brown gets back in this game. Yeah, it quickly. looks like what they're doing is they're going man, and once the ball gets to the wing, then they're going to bring the trap. You've got to be awfully good at rotating the defense if that's the case. Yeah, you do. And if you can make an extra pass, then you can get shredded. There's a jump by Bryant. Hands all over him. And we're going to get a reach instead by Jabril Roman. Yeah, that, that was, that play was on the end. Uh, Bryant pushed him on the outside. Roman got called for the foul on the back end. No, they actually called it on, they called it on Bryant. Okay, so they, all right, they there called, you go. Yeah, they called the right thing. I mean, one -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one situation here. Hard to believe that. Uh, eight fouls. Yeah, hard two. to believe that they're up three, having committed eight fouls. And no good. And look at that, look at the little one get up. Ah. Hernandez got up high for the rebound. Left-hander in the lane, no good, but a Todd will go to the line. That's a tough call on the outside by the trail official. Dave Cornish got his hands up. Does not agree with that one? You know, when the, guard, when, when the guard goes blindly into the paint yeah. and throws it up with his off hand, yeah. I'm not giving him up. I'm rewarding him. When you're the trail, yeah. too, if you're underneath the bucket and you see maybe a push or shove underneath, you blow the whistle. That's a play on, in my opinion. It's one of those things where let the kids play. It's a little bump and it's okay. You get frustrated like that when you're a coach? Yeah. You don't say anything, though. I almost got a T. I almost got a T this week. Almost got a T. No. Technical foul, huh? Guy thought I, guy thought I was uh, giving him lip, and I actually was I was being completely sincere. No, I'm I sure you were. I asked, <laughs> I asked He doesn't know to take you, though. Well, like I asked I what a call was, and he gave me the call. He told me what it was, and I said, well, you're closer than I am. And he goes, watch it, coach. I'm like, oh, I'm being serious. <laughs> Jones the other way, out of control. But they're going to call the block on Bryant. I thought Jones got away with it there. He was a little out of control yep. going to the basket. Jones trying to make something happen here. See, a lot of people don't know how to take you. you got to be careful with that. <laughs> you know, because if you say something to Mikey D or me or Peter Wappy, we get you. I mean, you say something to uh, you know, an official out in uh, Cromwell, <laughs> and you're going to have some problems. You're going you're gonna to draw some attention. Yeah, you're going to uh, get teed up. I'm going to tee you up, you little snarky guy. You, he said he goes, watch it, coach. I said, I'm being sincere. I'm way over here. You're right there. I just wanted to know if he got if he got his hand on right. it. You're closer than me. You tell him you're the Wesleyan? And you know what he said to me? Yeah. He goes, yes. I hear sarcasm a lot, coach. Sounded like sarcasm. <laughs> uh, Jones with the free throw. Let's see a little pressure here by the Colonels. Breathes uh, out, and we're going to get a timeout by Charles Sylvan because he saw that pressure. Yeah. I think he wants to reset yep. what they're doing here as that lead has shrunk to two. And Ledger's kind of found themselves right back in the game. Like you said, did, would it surprise you if Fitch won by 12, if Ledger won by two? I mean, it surprised you one bit at all. It wouldn't surprise me. You know what else wouldn't surprise me? A little checkup. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. At Waterford Dental Health, their entire team is dedicated to providing you with a personalized, convenient, and affordable dental health you and your family deserve. So you should visit them at 177 Boston Post Road or at waterforddentalhealth.com. Got a good basketball game here with 6.48 to go. Two-point game. Kind of thought what I expected, a bit of a low score. There he is, Mr. Sarcasm himself. Just tell him, hey, I went to Wesleyan. You guys, I should get every call. But this is kind of what we expected here, a little bit of a... You know, a little bit ugly basketball game at times. A couple teams trying to feel each other out, but a, a good boss basketball game, which you've seen a little back and forth on both ends. Sloppy play and good play. Yeah, and so, you know, both of these teams, we said in the uh, in the open, were uh, trying to establish themselves as the team that's going to compete with NFA, right? So NFA, I think we are comfortable saying, is the, is the best team uh, right now. Both these teams have yes. work to do to get on the court for NFA. They do, they yep. do. Um, 
I think right now, the way these two teams have played, I mean, Fitch obviously undefeated, and they might just be this scrappy bunch that finds a way. Yeah. But they have got, like you said, work to do yeah. to be considered in that conversation. Yeah, undefeated coach down there in the far corner. We'll get a shot up to Tim Strong of the uh, Montville Indians. Mikey DeMauro, uh, DeVille, good piece of the paper. And, and there's turnover, a turnover yeah. off the hands of Kershaw. Tim Strong was the JV coach here last year for Dave Cornish. Now he's the head basketball coach over at Montville. I love what are that, they, 6-0? Oh? Yeah, I love that, that he says Dave and Ralph have gone to their games. Yeah. And they go on and help them out. Yep. I think that's fabulous. Star player out, Zach Southard out with a broken finger. But we know what we saw. We saw uh, Antonio Brown. Uh, we saw some of the uh, athleticism there he is. on that this football coach, team. There he is. Coach on game day, there you go. 6-0, uh, and oh. and yeah, Brown. that's right. And Rel Green right there yeah. next to him. That's nice all right. I like that, though. I like the, the kid getting an opportunity and stepping up and, uh, and doing good things with it. Whitmore will shoot. Missed the front end. Nine to three, now 10 to, 10 to three. three. The fouls here in quarter number four, which means that, that for will six, play a factor, minutes and, yes. six minutes and 29 seconds, Ledger's in the double bonus. It's a lot of free throws. And Whitmore missed them both. Greaves and a jump ball. Ah, the little guy getting dirty, down and dirty. Whitmore frustrated after he missed two free throws trying to help himself. And every time you can turn it over and switch the uh, arrow, it's, it's a positive. Here comes the ball pressure. And there's an easy pass. Oh, and just a little late. Speedy. Yeah, that's a lazy pass, though. You can't make that soft pass. You gotta make, you gotta make zip passes. Wait for the zone to open and make a zip pass. That's there, though, isn't it? Yeah. The zip pass is. That little lob pass, though, is not there. The lollipop no, pass. That lollipop. There's the zip pass right there to Bryant. Nicely done. Bryant comes the other way. Pulls it out, and now pulls it up. Front rim. Whitmore out of the pack, up ahead to Jones. Jones, skies, and we're gonna get an offensive foul. Great job taking the charge. Hernandez took it, and Jones is frustrated. Yeah, Jones did a little sidestep that time, trying to avoid the contact. And again, maybe pull up and knock down that six-footer, Jabari. There's the long, that cross court pass is there. Look for it. Almost a walk. There it is. Nice job, Hernandez now. Up ahead, pump fake. And the basket is good by Roman. Yeah, good job that time by Roman. Nice job passing by the Falcons. Oh Hutchins. man, Hutchins is battling underneath and they're gonna call Ajaya Brown with a foul. Those two kids are working down there. I don't know, that's a... That's maybe a play on, and let's advise him on the next whistle, take it easy a little bit. Well, especially since it's going to be two free throws. Yeah. You know, and that are just two kids battling. Yeah, both those kids have put on a bunch of muscle, too, in the offseason. I can't say enough about Ajaya Brown, though, just as far as the attitude, mm. going to the Coast Guard Academy. Uh, when he's Senator Brown, you're not going to be surprised. No. You're going to hit him up, though, aren't you? Yes, Senator sir. Brown. Remember, yes, sir. remember when I knew you? I knew uh, you when Senator game Brown. Day, when you were on game day, yeah. I liked you when you were a kid, Senator Brown. Now about those potholes that I'm driving over <laughs> in my UPS truck. <laughs> You'll be retired by then. Short you, by Hutchins, but he hustles right. for the rebound. Yeah. Nice job by Roman pulling it out. Three-point Falcon lead. Todd goes right by Bickham and then pulls it back out again. Falcons being very deliberate. Hernandez, zip pass underneath. Hey, Seamus, your people came from the Highlands. Uh, Whitmore dump inside and oh Sheamus is there again. Yeah, he, you know they're gonna Sheamus in front, a little help on the backside. Awfully hard for Hutch to get a touch. I like that. I think you can chew Ryman. 
Oh, nice look underneath, but Brown there with the hands, knock lazy, it out. Lazy pass by Bickham, though. Get that ball in there. Let him. Let the big man make a play. Good look, bad pass. Mm, right? Lazy. Good look, bad pass. Oh, there's a good look, and it's off the hands. And up ahead, Hernandez. Bank shot is good. Yeah, Dave's going to have to have a timeout now. Full yeah, timeout. Yeah, the lead has gone back up to seven. Yep. Turnovers again. Hurting the legend Colonels off some easy scoring opportunities, turning the ball over. And you know, you, you see the resilience of Fitch, and they never seem to never seem to give up. They always no. kind of they're always kind of they're like nipping at your heels all the time. Yeah. They're like a bunch of like, you know what, they're a bunch of those chihuahua dogs. Yeah. Just yip, 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 yip. Yeah. But they work. Uh, you know, Charles Sylvan has gotten them. They work. Hernandez with 17 in the ball game, leading away for the Falcons. Hutchins, Whitmore, and Bickham, all of nine apiece. So nobody in double digits yet for Dave Cornish. If I told you that, I mean, I don't, how many points does Ajaya Brown have right now? Five? Yeah, five points. If I told points. you that with five minutes left in the game, Ajaya Brown would have five points, mm -hmm. what would you think? I well, would say they were down by six. Yeah, I mean, they're up by seven. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's surprising. That, you know, there's something about teams, in order to go undefeated, in order to, to make runs, weird things have to happen. Yeah. You know, can't, it's not always, you're not always gonna play good. Sometimes you gotta play bad and win. Sometimes you gotta play great against a team you shouldn't be. Right. Well, one of those things is sometimes unusual people have to step up and have big games. You know, there might be a game this year where a kid scores 24 points and won't break double figures the rest of his yeah. life. That's the kind of stuff that Fitch has going right now. Just a little mojo in the Falcons. And a turnover off of an inbound with no pressure. It's a bad turnover. Under five minutes remaining here. Falcons will inbound up seven. Only 10 points in the second half for Ledger. Brown picked up his dribble. They want that trap. There you go, kick out. Brown had it though. Hernandez kicks out now and Fitch is gonna take its time. They're gonna try to bleed some clock. There's a zip pass, Brown. Nice job by Whitmore from behind. Jones out of the pack. One on two, Skies. And an offensive foul, Hernandez did it again. Right, Jones is just pressing right now. He is just, he's trying a little too hard. I mean, if the defender knows what he's going to do, he's going to come in with a head of steam and take it to the rim. Uh, you know, give you Neil Hernandez credit because he has mm. taken some hard charges at the hands of Jones. Up ahead, and there's that turnover. Bad pass by Atad. So a break for the Colonels. Look for them to get Hutchins involved. Bickham drives, hangs, basket is good, and the foul. A hoop and a harm that time for Bickham off the curl. Just what the doctor ordered for the legend Colonels. How to find a way to manufacture points and create some pressure. So how about a three-point play the old-fashioned way? Free throw is up and it's good. Cuts the lead to four and Ledger will pressure. Oh, nice look. Up ahead, Hernandez. Bounce pass. Brown with the finish. Textbook press break by the Falcons. The timeout Fitch and Ajaya Brown is fired up. That's how you beat it. Started with Greaves. Made the nice pass over the top to Hernandez. Two dribbles, bounce pass, cutter. Basket. At the rim. Yeah. At the rim in stride. Ajaya Brown never put the ball on the floor. That's basically a drill you run in practice. Yeah. You know, you got three guys on the floor. It's it's rebound, which in this case was inbound. Yep. You know, pass, pass, basket. Yep. And it requires somebody who can finish at the rim, because you got to be able to catch that in position to score. I mean, Ledger's defender was there. Yeah, and Ajaya Brown has the length and yeah. has the athletic ability to get to the rim and score. There you go, a little Guns N' Roses, a little Welcome to the Jungle. 
We've got fun and games. Yeah. Colonel Crew. That's some fun and games right there. So Ledger to inbound, down six. Just over four minutes remaining in the ball game. Hernandez jumps out on Whitmore. Tough place to pick up your dribble. Whitmore is looking for Bickham. Now Bickham drives, stutter steps, hangs in the air. Ah, oh, there's no trick him. It's Jaden Bickham. Seamus Greaves trapped. Nice diagonal pass to Roman. Ledger looking for a trap, and we get a tip. The stay Falcon ball. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I was tipped. I thought that ball was thrown out nah, of bounds. I was tipped. I was tipped. I don't know. I didn't. Yeah, Mike Demars is tip as well. Make it rain. Right. No, you got to go this way. Palm up is is tip. Palm down is step side. Palm down is tip. Palm up is make it rain. So you got to know the difference. Yeah. It's a big difference. Oh boy, you are. We're in mid-season form, and it's only game two. I'm psyched for our, for the next couple we have, too. New London NFA girls, always a big fan of that. Yeah. And Windsor is Catholic. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Fitch happy right now. Take the air out. Roman pulls it up in the lane. No good. Aye! Sheamus! <laughs> Aye, you got high in the air like your ancestors. Oh, great look underneath the Hutchins for the easy putback. Easy layup off the nice look by Whitmore. Ball game here, four point game. There's the diagonal to Brown. He had, all right, he pulls it out. Ball's loose, who's gonna come down with it? Still loose. And we're gonna get a travel. Oh, wow. I'm not sure about that. I don't know He's what I've been told. Hen Official Henderson is explaining to him what he did. Still not sure what he did. He was on his butt, he didn't move, he just uh, took the ball and threw it. But, nonetheless. I might have, uh, I'm not sure what the, I really don't, well, travel. Right, it's travel. Move on. Pick him with the basketball for the Colonel. High screen from Hutchins. Pull up three, Bickham in and out. And, a, and Brown and Hutchins, that is a battle right there. But Hutch went and got it. Yep. Brown had position. That's the rebounding we were looking for in the first half. Well, you got to have it. That, you got to have that aggressive ability. Hutch went out there and grabbed it. Watch Jones here and a little cut to the rim on the inbounds. Not there. Bounce pass instead. Tipped. Whitmore, floater no good. Hutchins, strong rebound. But Todd comes out of the pack with it, though, for the Falcons. Hutch has got to control himself, come down with the basketball, and make a play. They're going to get a foul away from the ball, and that's going to be the seventh team foul on Ledger, which means it'll be a one and one, which means with two minutes and 13 seconds left, I hope you like free throws, because yeah. we're going to see a lot of them. Mike DeMauro shakes his head and says, yes, yes, sir. Mike DeMauro loves free throws at the end of basketball games. Yes, yes he does. When does two minutes and 13 seconds take 21 minutes and 30 seconds? Eternity. When everyone's in the bonus. And that is good. The old dead in it on the back of the rim and in. 49 to 44, two minutes and 13 seconds to go. Second one is up. And good, so two big free throws. Put the Falcons up six. Give nice the ball. look inside of Bryant. Up ahead it goes, and a foul. Double dribble. Oh, double dribble. Hutch has got to work a little bit to come to that basketball and seal off the defender with yeah. his body. You can't sit there and wait for the basketball. Yeah, seal. seal the defender off, grab yeah. the basketball, drop step, get two. Yeah. He's got to be more aggressive out there. Oh, nice look underneath the Jones, blocked from behind by Bryant. By Missed Bryant's opportunity. Played a heck of a game, huh? Missed opportunity in both directions. One by Fitch, one by Ledger. Todd splits, pulls up, 10 footer, no good. Rebound by Jones. He pushes up ahead and he overthrows Whitmore, who's able to save it in the corner. 
and a timeout. Dave Corner, she thought he saw timeout, Whitmore timeout, in trouble. Well, there's a little sneaky little move there by Dave Cornish calling timeout. He saw his guy kind of drifting out of bounds. And he's smirking down there. He might have got away with one a little bit. Timeout. You know, you know what they're doing right now? They're getting jiggy they're with They're getting it. jiggy with Will Smith has officially become uncool because the sports doctor knows the song. So. Nah. Did they play this at the Woodstock Fair? It was Skid Row. I saw Skid Row. Yeah, they Row. play this at the Woodstock they Fair. They play this? Uh, no. Skid Row doesn't get jiggy with it at the Woodstock Fair. <laughs> All right, you're Charles Sylvan right now. Channel him. What do you got? Uh, I tell you, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up for the pressure after the make. Here's how we're going to. So if Ledger scores here, this is how we're going to beat the pressure. Um, if we have an opportunity to push up and get to the rim off the pressure, we'll take it. If it's not there, we're going to spread the floor and make it come out and play us. Yeah, I think one of the most difficult. Uh, balancing acts for high school teams is when to attack pressure with a lead yeah. and when to not. You, have, you, have, you know, It's only a two score game and it's real easy to pull it out against pressure and try to bleed the clock. I like attacking pressure when you can. Yeah. Uh, if I can get a Jaya Brown or a Trey Bryant or Seamus Greaves at the rim, yep. I I'm going to take my chances. I'll give every easy basket I can get. Nothing there. Bickham goes lobs to Jones. Jones wants a clear out, swings to Whitmore, zip pass, three ball, no good. Greaves with a strong rebound. Boy, he's played a good ball game, hasn't he, Greaves? They got Brown trapped, he splits it, and Bryant wisely pulls it out, and a timeout from Charles Sylvan. He did not like the pass from Adriel Atat. No, he wants to take the air out of the basketball right here. Minute 23. So we saw Charles Sylvan, he's, that's what he's saying. He's, you know, protect, we got to protect the basketball, yeah. right? Number one thing, we got to protect this basketball. There can be no turnovers. They got, they're going to have to foul you. You got to go to the line, right? You got a two-possession two game. So looking back at the sports doctor's keys to the game, you said for Fitch that they had to turn Ledger over. Yep. Um, and they've done, some of, they've done some of that. But the second thing in your key to the game was rebound, and they've, and they've been fabulous. owned the glass. Like Fitch Falcons have yeah. owned the glass, yeah. And then knock down shots, which really they haven't had to. No. It's really been the rebounding. They've I mean, dirty worked themselves to a six-point lead here with a minute 23 left to go. You know, Ledger hasn't really had a problem with the pressure, but they've turned the ball yep. over against against non-pressure, and they have not gotten nearly enough easy buckets. Oh, uh, the easy buckets came in the second quarter when they had that big run off the turnovers, so. You know, I, I, I credit Fitch to come out of the locker room, to come out and hold Ledger to what, five points in the, in the third quarter. And really, they they stamped their seal on this game coming out of the locker room to start the third quarter. Yeah, the easy buckets, Ledger, how many layups has Ledger missed? I mean, around the basket, yeah, right? You know, that's where the easy buckets come in. Ton of them. Up six, Ken, the first thing the Falcons need to do is get a good inbound. And there's nothing there. Zip pass underneath to Greaves. And he traveled, but first, yeah, I could hit a good call. Greaves found himself under the basket, didn't know what to do, and yeah, he should have put it on the floor. Yep. That's a good call. Yeah, he just found you himself. Saw it. He found himself in no man's, man's land. land. Yeah. Jinx, buy me a Coke. Uh, he, <laughs> caught, he caught it. He's left handed, yeah. so he wanted to go to the strong hand, and he did that little dance. Oh, One shuffle. dribble, and he would have had it. High screen from Hutchins. Bickham looks for the roll from him now. There he is, there's a flash. And Hutchins just lost the pass. Good look. They ran the play to perfection, and Hutchins just didn't handle it. And he is mad he at himself. He struggled tonight. He has struggled. Yeah, he is mad at himself, too. Here comes full court. Someone's got to hit the home run pass right here. There it is. They had the home run. They chose not to get it. Reverse now. Up ahead it goes. Greaves, hard to the basket. He turns the ball over. And he lost the wow. ball himself. That's a bad mistake right there. Up six. That's a bad mistake. I like ah, the coach's nightmare right there, the turnover. I like going to the basket, but he, he didn't have an uncontested layup. And then you got to keep the ball. I'm a, I like to see Fitch put a little pressure on the ball right here. Make them eat some time. Kegel drives. Pull up jumper. Contested tipped around, and it's going to be Falcons' ball, and we're going to see Ledger go full court here. 
They went man last time, and I think man's very easy to break because the home run threat is there. That's three possessions down by six where Ledger's had a chance to cut it the lead and haven't done it. Here's that man pressure again. There it is, Brown, he's got it wide open now. Takes it down in the corner and back to Brown. That's smart, they're gonna have to foul. Get, it in, the get, of, get it in the hands of your free throw shooters. Good job by the Falcons, they're eating clock. They gotta foul, they gotta go now. Spread the floor. They oh, gotta nice foul job. Get they up can't and right foul. They can't get up. And they do, they foul Brown, he'll go to the line and he'll shoot a one and one. Great job on that possession by Fitch to eat a lot of clock. 25 seconds they eat. Yeah, and it wasn't like Ledger wasn't trying to foul. They just yeah. did a great job spacing the floor. So now here comes that first free throw here is huge because it's a two possession game. Knock the first one down right. and make it three, three possessions. Three possessions, yes. And Ledger's struggling to score in a half court set. And you're going to need three pointers and where are they coming from? Yeah. Well, I mean, they're going to come from Bickham, Cagle, I mean, Whitmore. But I'll take my chances with them shooting threes. Yes, sir. Yeah, they've got one. Actually, Jones can knock them down. Yeah, too. they've only knocked down, what, one three all night? Bickham, Bickham from the corner, that's it. One more for Brown. First one was good. Second one, no good. Rebound Bickham, and Ledger's going to push. Fitz will give you the bucket at the rim. Absolutely. Brown stepped in front of Cagle. Might have a shot. He's eating a lot of time. Bickham drives, hangs, contested. Greaves got a piece. Kegel, just too much time. And there's a step in by Roman. Other direction, high. Layup, no good. Tipped. Under seven seconds, and the Falcons are going to hold on. Ledger's just going to run out of time. Kegel's three is no good. And the Fitch Falcons have come into Ledger with a 51 44 win, and they will improve to 7 0. Ledger has dropped three straight. They had a two-point lead at halftime. And the Falcons turned up the pressure in the second half. And a big win for Fitch. They came back against New London. They came back against Ledger. And the climb continues. The road to the top of the ECC, which is always precarious, can often be treacherous. And the Falcons have maintained a sure footing as they move to 7-0. and Sports doctor will talk with Coach Charles Sylvan and a Falcon or two, I am sure. A happy group of Falcon fans and what is sort of a metaphor for the Falcon season. When the sports doctor asked Coach Sylvan for a Falcon to come talk to him, as we, say, as we show on camera in a moment, he didn't get one Falcon. He got a flock. Sports doctor. Well, this is about a four-year process in the making. A huge win tonight for the Fitch Falcons. Coach, talk about what it means just to come into a place like Ledger and come out of here with a victory. Oh, we feel very fortunate because it's a division game. So it was, it was a bigger game for us than the rest of them. And that was our focus coming in, trying to get off on the right step in the division. We had already won one, so we're trying to take it day by day and build brick by brick as we climb up the mountain. Now, one thing I noticed about this team is there's not just one star player. When somebody needs to be picked up, other guys will, will, will pick the team up. That's a big part of it, right? We have the family motto and the no limit motto. So we like to finish games and we like to play together. And when one man goes down, the next man's up. Well, a bit of a dirty work performance tonight by Janiel Hernandez. Tough on the defensive end, knocking down some shots. What was the mentality of the team coming in here to Ledger tonight? Uh, well, we always play together. It's a, it's a team that always works together. We play for each other and nobody else. That's how we win every game. All right. Now, Coach, moving forward now, you talked about the building blocks, the process. It's a long season. I mean, what do you take away from tonight as you head deep into league play in this month? Nothing. Nothing was won. <laughs> nothing was lost tonight. So for us, we come back tomorrow with our hard hat, and we're just looking to improve. We didn't even care about the result tonight. For us, we're going to go in the locker room and talk about how we finished the game and what we need to do to improve. That's where we're, that's where we're focus is. Well, Coach. Coach is pretty humble, but I'm sure you guys are really proud of yourselves. I'm sure it feels pretty good. Keep an eye on the Fitch Falcons this year. They're going to make a hot start here in the ECC. Thank you, Sports Doctor. 51-44 and a 7-0 win 
uh, excuse me, seven and zero Falcons this year. Let's talk a little bit about the upcoming games that you'll see on game day. Our next broadcast is uh, January 21st, where the NFA girls basketball team will host the New London Whalers. The Whalers on top in their first attempt uh, against the Wildcats this year. And then, of course, the big one, January 28th, East Catholic at Windsor, two of the premier teams in the state of Connecticut. So Sports Doctor, uh, yeah, hum a humble Charles Sylvan, but yeah. clearly, a, clearly a proud group of, uh, of Falcons. And I think it's kind of a metaphor. You asked Coach Sylvan, you know, give me a give me a Falcon or two. That entire team went over there to have that interview with you. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think that it's, you know, we talked a lot about Ajaya Brown coming in, but there's a lot of different kids that can pick them up on any given night, and uh, they stuck together. I, I'm proud of them. You know, they, they should be proud of themselves. I mean, again, this is a lot of people called for Charles Sylvans as, you know, bacon. Yeah. Uh, you know, when he first got up to a bad start, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it, winning is a process. Now he's got his style, his kids, and you got some kids that believe and some leaders, and uh, here you go. What are you, 7-0 and now? Yeah, he, you know, you're not wrong, and I think that does, that's, that's worthy of a second mention. Uh, he, he was hearing a lot of noise yeah. his first year and even into his second year at Fitch, mm -hmm. uh, and he kept, you know, he kept his cool. He was calm, and, and that kid right there, you know what? You're going to rebuild the program. You're going you're gonna to turn things around. You need kids like Ajaya Brown. Yeah. Um, he spent more time on the bench today than he did on the floor. Uh, and cheering the whole time, you know, his minutes on the floor. Yep. He's a, a leader. He's vocal. I mean, he's a pure teammate. Uh, there's a reason why he's going on to the Coast Guard Academy. And this, I mean, the kid is. Class uh, act. He is. Yeah, and you need a kid act. like that. You know, every, every time you look at a rebuild in a program, you, uh, you point to a player. And I think 10 years from now, and I sincerely hope that the Falcons are good for all those 10 years. But 10 years from now, when they look back and they go, you know, when did the Falcons turn it around? They're going to say, you know what, Ajaya Brown is the kind of kid. They're going to point to him as a as a cornerstone kid for the turnaround of Falcons basketball. Very unselfish, too. Yeah. Saw him on the sidelines cheering on his team, and, you know, if, if I got to sit in the bench for a few minutes while we work things out, that's what I got to do. Yeah. Unselfish play. Great job tonight by the Falcons, now, Casey. I don't want to give the sports doctor too much credit, but, you know, in the preseason of football, he uh, he said that he liked a, a certain team in football this year. Yeah. Uh, and that The team, Waterford Lancers. Now, I don't remember it being that. Now, listen, you and Peter Watt, still got to pay I, I up. I, I, I mean, I don't remember the specifics. Tim, they got to – they got to pay up. Peter, do you recall that or not? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Peter can come on air or not. I don't remember the specifics. I don't. Peter does not know it either. But I will give you credit, sports doc. We're down there, by in the way. In basketball. You're down there. All right. In, in basketball, basketball, I said the Fish you said, Falcons. Keep, your eye on the Falcons. keep an eye on the Falcons. I said NFA was going to be the team to beat. That's not exactly That's going sharp. out on That's a limb. That's in volume right there. <laughs> but he did say <laughs> go for them. So we've got a couple more uh, in January for you. We mentioned uh, New London and NFA girls and then the big one. East Catholic in Windsor. And, of course, we will have all of the tournaments, the cheerleading, the wrestling, uh, the basketball. <laughs> the shiny foreheads of the 50-year-old oh, men up here. Shiny forehead of 15-year-old men. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the crew, Tim, Carlos, Peter. Mike, Eric. For Mike tomorrow, Eric. Yep. For the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. I am Casey O'Neill. Good night from Ledger, everybody.